So, are you struggling to take great product shots with your iPhone? Maybe your photos are looking a little flat, lacking some creativity. Man, they just don't look right. I bet you're getting frustrated as hell. Now, let me tell you this. I've been there. I struggled when I first started out. You know, my photos, well, they were shit. So, to help you out and to stop you going through the pain that I went through, I've got five tips and tricks on how you can master product photography at home with your iPhone. Let's do this. What is going on? It's Anil. I have to say, product photography is the best form of photography for me. And the best thing is you can do all of it in the comfort of your own home. Forget about getting outside in that cold weather where your hands are frozen and you're, you're trying to take a photo. No, no, no. Product photography allows you to take your time. Get those creative juices flowing without having to battle the elements outside. Now don't get me wrong, nothing's ever gonna replace going outside, taking your iPhone and snapping some great photos, videos, filmmaking, street photography, whatever it is. But sometimes you just wanna do things in the comfort of your own home. Take your time, make a cup of tea and just shoot some product photography. So let's get into these tips. Tip number one. It's all about lighting. Now I've talked about the importance of lighting in several videos. Now there's two ways to get good light in your home, natural light and studio light. Now if you're lucky enough to have a home with big windows, lots of natural light, you can get away with shooting 90% of the product photos that you need to shoot. So if you're gonna take advantage of the natural light you have in your home, make sure you have a lot of light surfaces to bounce light off. Choose a room with white walls, lots of white surfaces, anything that reflects light to give you better light for your product shots. If you don't have that option, you can always get some cheap reflectors. Matter of fact, reflectors are a must have in your studio. They are so cheap. I've got dozens of reflectors lying around. Whenever I need to play with light, I'm always using reflectors. So natural light is always the best. And I've done a whole video talking all about natural light for your product photography. I will link that below. Now, if you're not that lucky with the natural light in your home, then you might need to go and invest in some studio lights. Just remember that you don't need to spend a lot of money to get good studio lights for your home product photography. It's all about just setting a budget and sticking to it. It's also important to remember how much space you have in your home to store your light because you can go out and get a massive light dome, but if you haven't got the space to store it, it's a waste of money. Now I use the Godox SL60W as my main studio light. Now I use this for all product photography videos. Even this video right now, I'm using that light on my face. It's an unbelievable light and it's only $140. It's an absolute bargain. I've had this light for years, two, three years now, and it has never failed me. But there are plenty of more expensive or even cheaper options out there. You just need to do your research, stick to your budget, and just think about the space you have available. If you're storing it away, you might need to go with something a little bit more compact. Guys, just before we move on, if you're liking the content, please smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, little bell icon, if you want to get notified when I drop my next video. Right, let's drop into the next tip, tip number two, and that is using a pro camera app. Now you can use a standard camera app and take great product photos, but a pro app is gonna give you so much more control over your photo shoot. Now I highly recommend that you go and download a pro camera app like Lightroom Mobile. Lightroom Mobile is amazing. I've been using it for years and the free version is all you need to take great product photography. You can start controlling the shutter speed, your exposure, even manual focus control. It's so easy to use. I've done a full video tutorial with a product shoot with my iPhone using Lightroom Mobile. I'll also link that video down below so you can check that out once you finish this video though. So tip number three is all about texture. Now texture is vital. Texture creates interest. It creates wonder. It helps connect people to the story that you're trying to tell. Texture is everything. Your props, your background, 
everything. When you're choosing a background, make sure it's got lots of interesting texture. Look around you. You can find stuff in your house, your garden, your shed. Look for surfaces that's got bumps and little nicks and crannies. Those are the best surfaces to use for good product shots. Now I'm going to give you a little secret tip. One of the best ways to add texture to your product shot is to use loose tea. Now, I know what you're doing. You're sitting there laughing. You're like, what? You loose tea? What's he talking about? Believe me, I've used loose tea in hundreds of product shots. I recently shot a video for this channel where I used Canamal tea to add texture to a product shot that I was doing. But don't stop there. You can use jasmine pearls, loose black leaf tea. It doesn't matter. Tea is a fantastic way to add texture to your product shots. Now this rolls nicely into my next tip and that's all about the props. Props really help to tell the story and it's vital that you find the right props that tell the right story. They have gotta complement the product you're shooting. It's gotta motivate it. Pick up the product, ask yourself a few questions. Who would use this? Where would they use it? Where are they gonna store it? What's the product made of? These questions are gonna help you decide what props you need to source or find around your house. It's gonna help you tell a great story in your product shop. So for example, if it's a level wallet, you might wanna include some of the tools that were used to make it. This can be powerful, especially if it's a handmade item. Now, the last tip's all about balance. Balance is about knowing how much light to use, when to use it, where to use it. Balance is about the props that you're using, how you're placing them, where you're placing them, how many props you're using. And it all depends on the look you're trying to go for and the product, the scene you're trying to set. Maybe you need more light, less light. You might want to create more shadows on one side. You might want a dark, moody look. You're always playing with the balance, playing with the light, playing with the props. Just play, just keep on playing. In some cases, less is more. I mean, you're not outside in the cold. Remember that, you're at home. Take your time, move things around, go different angles, find the correct balance. Don't overdo it. Don't, don't put too much clutter there and you can't even figure out what the product is. Remember, the main objective is to highlight the product and tell its story. Right, that's it guys. Those are my five tips and tricks on how you can get the best out of your product photography at home with your iPhone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna learn more, please check out these other videos. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.